Hello everyone, let us continue our discussion on response due to support motion. So, MDOF system under support motion. Today we will solve one example and uh, uh, a few important topic we are going to discuss with an example. So, let us consider the thread of system that we have already used in the previous lectures. So, we have first mass, then there is a second mass and we have a third mass. Now, m 1, m 2, m 3 and then we have k 1 c 1, k 2 c 2 and then k 3 c 3. So, 3 degrees of freedom we have identified that is the generalized coordinate. So, the given properties are m 1 is equal to m 2 is equal to m 3 is equal to say 10 kg. Now, these are hypothetical data not from a exact building, but you can easily uh, extend it for a real life building. So, K 1 and K 3 are 120 Newton per meter and then K 2 is equal to 150 Newton per meter. And then as usual we consider the damping ratio in the first two modes to be 5 percent and then it is excited by the support motion marked as x g double dot of t and this is the L central ground motion we are going to use. So, that is the problem statement. So, what we are going to do? We are going to answer. So, the questions are the first thing is evaluate modal participation factor. That is the first thing. Second thing is estimate shear using modal superposition. So, these are the questions that we are going to answer. So, equation of motion in this case again is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to mass times 
influence vector times x g double dot of k. Now, carefully note uh, I earlier used a different notation. Um, this equation was based on u, u was the relative displacement with respect to ground, but here uh, I purposefully use x, where this equation clearly reveals that x is the relative displacement with respect to ground. Now, uh, what we have to do x equal to phi z is the transformation, right. And if you do that, then obviously, we will have phi transpose m phi z double dot plus phi transpose c phi z dot plus phi transpose k phi z is equal to phi transpose m influence vector then x g double dot of t. But today we are not going to solve this equation using time history approach, right. So, what we will do? We will adopt the technique called response spectrum. So, when we will estimate this base shear, then first we will decompose the entire system into modal coordinates as we have already done in the second equation. So, we started with this first equation and then now we have this second equation and then uh, we will use this technique response spectrum. We have already developed the response spectrum for El Centro earthquake. Today we are going to use it. Now, what is the mass matrix in this case? Because at each and every floor, the mass of that respective floor is lumped. So, obviously, it will have m 1, m 2, m 3, right. And then uh, the stiffness is k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2, then 0, then here minus k 2, k 2 plus k 3 minus k 3, then 0 minus k 3, k 3. So, that is the stiffness matrix. Now, when you combine these two, you get the eigenvalue problem. So, that is k minus omega square m determinant of that equal to 0. So, if you do that, you get natural frequency and in this problem, if you solve it, you will get natural frequency as 1.5979. We are not going to solve here because we have already done many a times even using MATLAB. So, all of you know uh, how to do that. So, the next one is 4.3658 and the third frequency is 6.6624. So, we have three frequencies and then also mode shape. We can estimate and the value let me write it down. So, 1 1 2 2 minus 0 0.1829 minus 0 0.2323 then 0 0.2188 then 0 0.1158 then minus 0 0.1968 and the last mode is minus 0 0.1989 
0 0.2305 minus 0 0.0854. So, for this system what we have is the natural frequency and the mode shift. Okay. So, now uh, let us also find out the time period T n, T n is equal to 2 pi by omega n, right. So, then T n for this problem is 3.9322 second, next one is 1.4392 second and the last one is 0 0.9431 second. So, now we have T n because uh, our response spectrum is based on uh, this time period and we also have phi. Now, with these two, we will first calculate what is the modal participation factor. Now, for that, uh, let me make some space here because we need these values. Okay. So, modal participation So, modal participation factor if it is say p k, then this is the ratio of w i phi i k divided by summation w i phi i k square. This i ranges from 1 to n, the number of modes we have. What is w i? w i is the weight of the structure at ith floor. So, if we estimate the first modal participation factor P 1 will be what? P 1 is equal to W 1 phi you see it is 1 1 plus w 2 phi i will be 2. So, this is 2 1 plus w 3 phi i is 3. So, 3 1 divided by w 1 phi 1 1 square plus w 2 phi 2 1 square plus w 3 phi 3 1 square. So, now what we can do we already know w i at each floor level and incidentally the all the floor masses are same. So, we can uh, easily evaluate all w i. Now, 
let me just note T n here and then we will make some more space. So, 3.9322 1.4392 then 0 0.9431 they are in second ok. So, let us evaluate the first participation factor. So, W 1 is uh, 10 times g. So, we can cancel g in numerator and denominator. So, and also we can take 10 common. Then inside phi 1 1, so we have to come here. So, phi 1 1 is say minus 0 0.1122 plus then we have phi 2 2. So, it will be minus 0 0.1829 and then minus 0 0.2323 divided by then again we take 10 common and within bracket square of these quantities summed up right. So, minus 0 0.1122 whole square plus minus 0 0.1829 whole square plus minus 0 0.2323 whole square. Okay. Now, if you do this calculation. So, what you will get? It will be minus 5.2739. So, that is the first model participation factor. Similarly, we can also calculate P2, which is 1.3773. And P3, which is minus 0 0.5377. So, these are the three modal participation factors. So, the first part of the problem is done, modal participation factors are evaluated. Let us just again note it down. So, P 1 is equal to minus 5.2739 P 2. Let me write in the same line. So, P 2 is equal to 1.3773 and P 3 is equal to minus 0. 5377. Okay. So, before we go to the second part of the problem, let us quickly also evaluate the modal mass and modal mass participation factor. So, that we will do in a minute, but before that if you carefully note how many stories we have, we have 3 stories in this problem. And then uh, obviously, what is the total mass of the st structure? We have 3 stories with m 1, m 2, m 3 are the 3 masses at each uh, level. So, the total mass is basically the sum of uh, these 3 uh, localized mass at different floors. So, total mass, total mass is equal to m 1 plus m 2 plus m 3 which is in this case 30. Now, let us first calculate modal mass. Let us first 
remember we convert the equation of motion into model coordinates and then uh, we mass normalize the equation uh, to get this mod shape. But if we do not mass normalize, we will have a model mass. So, uh, in every mode, we can actually find out what is the modal mass. So, if m k is the modal mass, then m k is equal to summation w i phi i k i ranging from 1 to n square of this quantity divided by g times i equal to 1 to n then w i phi i k square. So, this is the expression for modal mass and then uh, we can estimate the first modal mass. So, m 1 will be what? So, 10 times nine point eight one that is G and then uh, multiplied by the first phi i equal to one and k equal to one so phi one one so we'll be here again the first column we have to consider so minus zero point one one two two minus 0 0.1829 minus 0 0.2323 whole square divided by oh there will be square here and then we have 9.81 let me just again get some space. So, 9.81 then within bracket what we will have is uh, w 1. So, it is 10 into 9.81 and then we have the square of these quantities. Okay. So, now uh, if you solve this expression then uh, you can evaluate the first modal mass and that will be 27.8141. Similarly, we can also find out second modal mass and that will be 1.8968 and the third modal mass is 0. 2891. So, you can see as we go in higher and higher modes, the modal mass effectively reduces. So, in the first mode, we have the maximum modal mass, then the second mode, and then finally the third mode. Now, all these calculations uh, again uh, for the second and third mode, you please uh, do it at your end and cross verify. So, what we now have is the modal mass at each level. So, mode 1, mode 2, mode 3 has these modal masses. So, m 1 is equal to 27.8141.
m 2 is equal to 1.8968 and m 3 is equal to 0 0.2891. Now, one interesting thing you can note is if you sum these three modal masses, again you will get 30 kg. So, effectively the total mass what we started with that same 30 kg we distribute in three different modes following certain mathematical model and that is what gives us the total mass exactly same. Whether we are in the generalized coordinate or in the modal coordinate, see the total mass is exactly same. Now, what we can do? We can easily find out mass participation factor in each mode. So, it is basically the fraction of the total mass present in each and every mode is the modal mass participation factor. So, we call it mass participation factor. that we get say first mass participation factor say alpha m 1 is equal to m 1 divided by summation m i. So, total mass we know total mass summation m i is 30 in this case. So, m 1 divided by 30 in percentage will give you basically the mass participation factor. So, if you calculate that will come 92.71 percent, then alpha m 2 that is in the second mode it will be 6.32 percent and finally, in the third mode if you calculate it will be 0 0.96 percent. So, effectively in the first mode we have maximum participation and then gradually it gets reduced and then finally, um, we get the total um, participation factor again will be 1 that is how we distribute the modal mass in different modes. Okay. Now, for every system if we know the mass and stiffness matrix, we can do the Eigen analysis, natural frequency and mode shape we can estimate and then we can easily calculate modal participation factor, then modal mass and mass participation factor. The, now, the next part of this uh, uh, we have to solve and for that um, let us first uh, estimate the force acting, seismic force acting at different floor level and um, using that we will calculate what is the base shear. Now, before that as I have already told you that we are going to solve this uh, using um, response spectrum. So, let us quickly revisit the response spectrum that we um, developed earlier using L central ground motion. So, if you recall we have developed this code and uh, using Nigam and Jennings algorithm and then if we run this code, we get the response spectrum and out of that let us consider this acceleration response spectrum what you can see on x axis we have this uh, time period of the system that we have already evaluated. So, here you can see the time period uh, for the system we have now. So, we have first time period as 3.9322, 2, then the second one is 1.4392 and then finally, 0 0.9431. Now, today we are using this uh, response spectrum we generate from um, L central ground motion, but in case of earthquake resistant design normally we use design spectrum that is available in our design codes. Now, what we get 
is basically the response of uh, SDOP system that is the maximum response of the SDOP system for a given um, damping level. So, we set again 5 percent damping level and then uh, for these three uh, natural frequencies or corresponding time period we can uh, read the ordinate and that I will use to evaluate the force at a different level. So, for that So, our next task is design lateral force. Now, how do you calculate design lateral force? So, if it is say q i k that is the design lateral force, it is basically the product of a k phi i k p k and then w i. Let me explain all this. Uh, out of that phi i k we know this is the mode shape corresponding to given i and k. i stands for here the floor level. So, for every floor level we have w i that is the weight and k stands for different mode. So, for every mode we have this modal participation factor we have already evaluated. So, we will use this participation factor here and then we have a k which comes from response spectrum. So, what is a k? A k is the design horizontal acceleration response spectrum value. Now, again I repeat we get this from the design code, but for the time being we will use the response spectrum that we have developed to estimate this a k. So, in our case a k that we read from the response spectrum and the value of this is 0 0.0411 corresponding to T n. 3.9322, then the next one is 0 0.1588 corresponding to a Tn of 1.4392 and finally, A3 is 0 0.5510 corresponding to a Tn of 0 0.9431. So, now we have all these design horizontal acceleration response from the response spectrum and at this point actually it differs from the other response analysis that we have done previously. So, we will use response spectrum because we have a coupled system that we decoupled in different modes and every mode it behaves like a single degree of freedom system for which we have already developed the response spectrum that is the maximum response. So, we can use that to quantify the design force level that is precisely what we will do here. Now, so what we can do is let me write the a k values here. So, a k is 0 0.0411 then 0 0.1588 and then 0 0.5510. Okay. So, now let us calculate q 1 1. So, for that what we have here is uh, 0 0.0411 0 
times the value of phi, so which is minus 0 0.11 to 2, then first mass participation factor that is minus 5.2739 times W1, so that is 10 times 9.81. So, that is along first degrees of freedom, so 0 0.0411 times second value that is phi to 1 will be minus 0 0.1829, then p k that is uh, same phi point 0.2739, then 10 times 9.81 and then finally again 0 0.04 1 1 times phi the last case point 2 3 2 3 then again phi point 2 7 3 9 times 10 times 9 point 8 2. So, if you do this you will get 2 point for 3 to 2, then 3.9640 and then 5.0353. Right. So, that is the design force level in first mode. Similarly, we have to re repeat for the second mode and third mode that we will do in a minute, but remember this is the uh, floor level 1, this is floor level 2, this is third floor. So, that is the uh, distribution of force we have uh, and then uh, we will repeat the same exercise for second and third mode and then we will combine this to find out the uh, story shear and from that story shear we will actually evaluate what is the base shear that we will do in a minute. So, let me just write down this force in each mode. So, the first one we have already calculated 2.4322, then 5.0353. So, that is in first mode. Similarly, we have to find out in the second and third mode. So, If you repeat the same exercise, you will get in the second mode 4.7843, then 2.5325 minus 4.3047. And then finally, in the third mode, we will have 5.8924, then minus 6.8301 and then 2.5307. Now, again I will suggest all of you to calculate this q i 2 and q i 3 following the same uh, steps that I have explained. Uh, for every element in q i 1. So, now we have design lateral force in every mode and then what we have to do is uh, we have to find out the 
story shear. So, we have to convert this into story shear and then from there we will apply two important rule that I will explain in a minute. So, uh, this is two point So, that we will do in a minute. So, story shear So, this is V i k is the story shear is equal to q j k then j equal to i plus 1 to n. Now, how do you calculate story shear? For that, let us consider this diagram. So, for example, if you are in the second story, then at this level, the forces coming from the upper story. So, we have to consider all the forces in the upper story. Similarly, when you go to the next floor level, so here, so we have to consider the forces, lateral forces coming from uh, all the upper stories. So, and that is how we actually get the story shear at each level and then automatically finally, when we come to the ground floor level, we get basically the base shear. So, that is how we convert this lateral forces in every mode into story shear and that is the reason we have you see i plus 1 that means, if you are at the ith floor then i plus 1 to n. So, we go to all other higher floors and then sum it up. So, if I do that V i 1 will be what we will get from these. So, now let me mark it. So, this is the first floor level, this is the second floor level and this is the third floor level. So, third floor or top floor this will remain same. When we go to the second floor obviously, we have to add these two up, then that will be the total lateral force in this mode acting at the second floor level and when we go to the first floor obviously, we have to consider all the forces and then sum it up. So, if we cumulatively sum it up, we can actually calculate the story shear and if you do that, it will be 5.0353 that is the third floor level. Then in the next floor, we will have sum of the two. So, 9994 and then 11.4316. So, just one thing to be noted, here in this case we started from the first floor, then we went up to third floor, but when we calculate the story shear and distribute them. So, this is the third floor, this is the second floor and this is the first floor. We will draw the diagram in a minute, then it will be further clear. So, that is how we cumulatively sum it up and then finally, get the story shear. Now, uh, for this second mode, again it will be minus 4.30247, then minus 1.7721 and then 3 point 0122. So, this is the third floor, this is the second floor, this is the first floor. Similarly, in the third mode, we have 2.5307 minus 4.29 nine four and then one point five nine three zero. So these are the forces in Newton. So this is again the third floor, 
this is the second floor, this is the first floor. Okay. So, now we have story shear in each and every mode. So, the first mode, second mode and third mode we have. Then we have to combine them to get the maximum story shear. So, design story shear and there are different rules are there. Now, the first one obviously, sum of maximum values that means, we just sum them all them up and then find out what is the horizontal force acting at each floor level and that will give us the total shear force acting at the base. Second one most popular is called SRSS square root of the sum of squares. So, individually we will square them up and then sum it up and then finally, take a square root and that will give us the value of story shear based on SRSS and then third, third rule is called CQC complete quadratic combination. Now, normally we prefer this SRSS rule when the modal frequencies are well apart. So, if you recall we at the very beginning estimated the modal frequencies and the time period here you can see and they are well apart you can see they are not very close. So, for this problem we can safely uh, apply SRSS uh, rule. But if the modes are closely spaced, then uh, the closely spaced modes interact and in that case uh, we do not uh, use this SRSS. In that case we use CQC rule and this expression for CQC rule it comes from the random vibration theory which is not covered in this course. So, I will just give you the expression, but let us first calculate the maximum uh, design force acting as per uh, SRSS rule. So, uh, first one you can easily um, calculate you just sum it up and you will get it, but the V SRSS how do we get this is the square root of then what we have the first value is 5.0353 square plus minus 4.3047 square plus 2.5307 square. So, if you do that, you will get 7.0915 and for the other stories, if I write it. So, V, so this is actually first story. So, V SRSS is 7.0915, then 10.1298 and then finally, 11.9286. So, that is the distribution of design shear force. Now, we have 3 degree of freedom system corresponding to 3 different stories. So, let me draw the shear force distribution.
So, this is the third floor level, this is the second floor level and this is the first floor level. So, the distribution of story shear is like this. and the values are 7.0915, then at this level we have 10.1298 and finally, at this level we have 11.9286, these are in Newton. So, that is the distribution of um, um, lateral shear force acting on the structure. Now, designer uses this to then select two things, one is the cross section of this column, another is the material property and the amount of reverb to provide. That is not covered in this course, that is the design aspect, but today what you learn how to use the response spectrum and from that response spectrum uh, you get basically the maximum response of the SDOF system and then finally, once you get uh, that how to calculate the base shear uh, at different level of a shear building model. And for that we use a rule called SRSS rule. What about CQC? Uh, but, but before that, let us just write down SRSS rule. So, SRSS in mathematical form lambda is the quantity, then it is the square root of the summation k equal to 1 to r. I will explain that in a minute lambda k square. So, that is the expression for SRSS. Now, what is r? r is the number of modes that we consider. It can be all the modes, for example, in the 3 drop system we uh, considered, here we have considered all the modes. So, we calculate these uh, forces in every mode and along every story. Now, it may so happen that based on the uh, mass participation factor, you truncate after certain mode and then in that case uh, up to that truncated mode you consider here the response quantity. Here what is this lambda the response quantity it is V the uh, horizontal forces that we are uh, evaluating at each floor level and then based on that we calculate this um, SRSS value of the story shear. Now, before we conclude, as I said, uh, there is a better option when we have closely spaced modes, but because uh, in our case we have uh, well separated modes, we have used SRSS, but uh, in case of closely spaced modes, uh, we can go for CQC rule. We will not derive that quantity because uh, that is beyond the scope of this course. For CQC rule, the lambda, the same lambda CQC or let me write down lambda CQC is equal to square root of I equal to 1 to R, J equal to 1 to R, lambda I rho i j lambda j. So, what are lambda i and lambda j? They are the response quantities in i th and j th mode and what is this rho i j? This is the correlation between i th and j th mode. So, rho i j we need to evaluate. The expression for rho i j is uh,
सो बीटा आई ये इज द रेशियो ऑफ द टू फ्रीक्वेंसीज विच आर क्लोजली स्पेस्ड सो दैट्स द रेशियो ऑफ द टू फ्रीक्वेंसीज एंड देन आर इज द नंबर ऑफ मोड दैट वी कंसिडर so first we need to evaluate this correlation between ith and jth mode and then we need to evaluate the response quantity okay but as i said i mean the derivation of this is uh, not covered in this course uh, the reason being uh, it comes from the random vibration theory so what i can suggest uh, you can try this find out this correlation coefficient between ith and jth mode based on this definition what i have shared with you um, and then um, find out the cqc values because in this case we have well separated modes even if you calculate this cqc you will see it will be uh, same as what we have already estimated because uh, the modes are well separated this uh, correlation will not contribute much and that's the reason srss rule in this problem is sufficient but uh, i leave this exercise uh, for you if you have any trouble to evaluate do let us know and then uh, in the open session i will help you out otherwise uh, this problem clearly tells you how to solve the response uh, of a shear building model when it is excited by support motion using response spectrum approach now before we close today's uh, lecture i uh, will show you the code once more where uh, you can easily uh, adapt this uh, srss algorithm so this is basically the code earlier we developed when we uh discuss this uh, support motion problem and i slightly modified that code here you can see so modal participation factor first we calculate after we do the modal analysis and there again we use the same expression phi wm that is the weight at different story times phi divided by wm times phi square the expression that we have uh used uh earlier for this modal participation factor so that's the thing and then we evaluate modal mass in a exactly similar way following the expression i have discussed and then uh, mass participation factor so at each and every mode we calculate mass participation factor and normally we uh, cover up to 95% modal mass in any dynamic analysis then these are the acceleration levels that we get from the response spectrum then we calculate horizontal force in every mode along uh, every story and then finally we convert them into um, the story shear and for that we use the cumulative summation so all the above floors will contribute to a particular floor and that's what we do here to find out the cumulative summation to estimate the story shear and then once we do that uh, we can use the maximum uh, value and then sum it up to find out the designed value of the story shear or we can adopt the srss rule now here if you uh, wish to adopt cqc rule then we have to uh, do a few more calculations that i leave it as an exercise for you so if i run this code and here you can see we have estimated all those uh, that i have done so now these are the uh, modal participation factor first then modal mass and then modal participation factor in three modes and then uh, q1 q2 q3 we calculate for every mode 
and then uh, v 1, v 2, v 3 and then finally, uh, we get the maximum value and then sum it up or SRSS rule uh, to combine them to find out the storage here. And when you cumulatively sum them up and when you come to the ground floor obviously, you sum up all the above stories and so that is the uh, base shear acting. So, the designer used these values and because our modes are well separated, this is a good estimation of the design force. Now, the point to be noted here is that the response spectrum analysis really helps us to bypass the time history simulations and that is always time consuming. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can use the response spectrum values and easily evaluate the shear forces acting at the different floor level. So, I hope this problem is clear to you. What I suggest you please practice at your end, I will share this code so that you can also cross verify. I, I will suggest one thing in the same code, if you remove this pause and just run it, you will also get the response at different floors and from there you can also calculate the forces acting at different floors and from there you can find out what is the maximum shear force and that you can compare with this uh, SRSS values that we have estimated today. So, that will be a good exercise to give you confidence that uh, these estimations are correct or not. I leave that exercise uh, with you, but um, if you have any problem just go through this code and the complete uh, note and the lecture and then if you have any problem do let us know in the open session then I will clear your doubt. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.